four out. Georgia in the next four out. So again, both of these teams in a must win scenario pitted against each other today in our first game of this Thursday round two. What a way to start this day two. Back here with Steffi Sorensen, Andy Landers. We're excited for this game. We're excited to hear what Eric Fried and Tamika Catchings have for the, on the call for us. Eric, what are you looking at when it comes to this matchup today? Well, first of all, I'm looking at the most talented point guard here in Greenville. That's you, Alyssa, for running the show with those two up on the stage. So all apologies to Ty Harris. You're number one in our book. I agree with that one. <laughs> and I don't know what drip is, Andy, but since you're still wearing a suit from your coaching days in Georgia, you've got all and more. <laughs> Number one, I think, from Georgia's point of view, and you talked talked about it a little while ago, Jenna Stady. She's playing great right now for Georgia. She is a different player over these last several weeks. The question's going to be, does Alabama have the pieces to hang up front with Jenna Stady, who has been going for 20 or more in the last three games? You know, catch Alabama is a team that has been red hot, won four of their last games. How do they sustain that momentum and what is going to be considered an NCAA implication type game? Well, I think they have to come in. They have to have that sense of urgency. That is something that Coach Curry talked about. She said every single game they come out, every single practice, having that sense of urgency, and they have it with Jordan Lewis leading the top. She knows what to do, and this is a big game, so they'll be ready for it. We are looking forward to y'all's call on this grim game. Good luck, and we will see you at halftime. All right, thanks so much, Alyssa. It is an NCAA elimination game for these two programs. The loser will not be in consideration for the NCAA tournament. It's not that the winner has an easy path to the NCAAs because the winner of this game takes on the number one team in the country, South Carolina. But these two teams feel pretty good about themselves coming into this 8-9 matchup here today. Alabama, winners of four straight. Georgia coming off a win against Florida. They won the matchup this year with Alabama in overtime. In fact, four of the last five meetings between these two teams have gone to OT. We expect a battle here today, and we are underway. Georgia in black with the first possession. Well, I think when you look at that sense of urgency, that is what you'll see from both teams. I don't think it's just one team. Knowing what's down on the line for this game, they're going to be ready to play. That's a good sign for Georgia because Alabama will let Chloe Chapman shoot. She's averaging a point and a half a game in the lineup with the absence of Q Morrison, who's out after labrum surgery. The Alabama starting five is led by Jordan Lewis at the point. Jasmine Walker, second team all-conference selection, and Sierra Johnson, who has been on target over the last three games, but misses her first shot today. Georgia's lineup features Stady on the inside and Gabby Connolly, the junior from San Antonio, running the show. They try to feed it to Stephanie Paul, and it's an early turnover for the Bulldogs. So one of the things that you'll look at for this Georgia Bulldog team, they're trying to get the ball to Jenna Stady. You stated that in, in the beginning of the in the beginning of the game, but really Jenna Stady is the key to their offense. When they can get her involved, they can get her going early. She played with the confidence that she's had the past couple games. This team will be really, really hard to beat. Stady's gone for double figures in seven straight, averaging 20 points a game during that span. This is a Georgia team under Joni Taylor that has been a defensive-minded group, but they're without their defensive anchor, Hugh Morrison. More on that as we go along here. Connolly in transition, tries a three. Megan Abrams kept it alive. Sierra Johnson got the handle back and gave it off to Lewis. And Sierra Johnson, number four, is the player to watch. She has opportunities, and she had time during the game when you watch her, what she can do. Jasmine Walker, we were, we were at the game when she played against Texas A&M, and she lit them up from the three-point line. That's a good sign for her first shot. Had a career high 24 in that game catch. Six three-pointers in that win against A&M. It was back-to-back -back victories over top 15 teams on the road, Mississippi State and Texas A&M that really defined this great late season push for Alabama. Off another Georgia turnover, it's Abrams can't get it to go. Well, you saw the last possession, Jenna Stady got the ball down low. Alabama quick to bring double team, forced her to make a shot. And there's a foul on Araya Copeland, her first. So we talked about recently between these two programs, overtime has been needed. And it's been that close. They had an overtime game in their meeting this year. It was on February 16th. Georgia won it 76-75. Alabama was down by 22 in the third quarter. 
came back to force overtime. And when we talked to Christy Curry about that game, and when you're looking, well, what's the turning point? You've won four in a row. They went on a four-game winning streak after that game. Well, it was the second half of that game, and the word that's been used time and again, urgency. And they've been playing with it, and they've been playing well. Well, they picked that word after that game. So actually, they went into that game that second half going into overtime, they probably played some of their best basketball. But before that Mississippi State game, when their team sat down, the coach had picked the word, but they picked the word urgency. Looking at that second half of the game in overtime, we need to have more of a sense of urgency for 40 minutes. There's a fine line between urgency and desperation. And these two teams, as this game goes along, it'll be interesting to see which team will be playing loose, which team will be playing tight. Here's Stephanie Paul with the steal, and Paul takes a hard tumble. That was Jordan Lewis getting back defensively. Well, Jordan Lewis does a great job of just running through. Walker off the mark on that attempt. Here comes Chapman. And the ball was kicked out top. First yeah. substitution of the game catch is Freshman Jordan Isaacs, who's played well down the stretch for Georgia, coming in for Stephanie Paul. Yeah, Stephanie Paul will exit the game, but you saw just that possession, last possession, she tried to post up Jordan Lewis. That is what Paul does really well. She's able, obviously, she's a bigger guard. She's able to use her body to post up and really effective. Gabby Connolly gets her first point. She's leading the team in scoring 12 and a half a game, also leads the team in assists at three and a half a game. Georgia coming off a win on senior day, 66-59 over Florida. They were down after three quarters, went on a 14-0 run in the fourth to go in front and didn't give up the lead. Johnson walks. And I like the aggressiveness of both teams right now, the way that they're playing. You can feel the energy. Obviously, like you said, it's not desperation. It's just an opportunity to what comes next. One game at a time, you focus on one possession. But I'm sure both coaches have emphasized how important each possession is from the offensive end and the defensive end. We'll keep you up to date as we go along. Charlie Cream has crunched all the numbers as Connolly hits again. And what's at stake for these two teams? Georgia has played their way into consideration. And a win here today would help push them a little bit forward and push them into a quarterfinal matchup with South Carolina, of course. But Alabama with that stretch run just outside the NCAA tournament field right now. First look inside for Copeland, who's averaging 14 points and nine rebounds over her last two games. Well, that's a great possession. You see, as Jordan came off the screen, Jenna Stady stayed a little bit too long to be able to get that, that dish down low. Well, Gabby Conley is in the zone right now. Six quick points for the junior, and Georgia is back on top by five. Well, it's interesting because as we talked to both coaches, Connelly came up on both sides. Obviously, Georgia, you want to get her going. And obviously, Christy Curry, you're trying to figure out how do you stop Gabby Connelly? She's well, hot right now. On the other end, Alabama attacking the basket with Copeland scoring again. Caldwell back in the state. He shoots before the double can get there. There's the freshman Isaacs fighting. Player down for Alabama is Megan Abrams. Now Isaacs is down and Johnson as well. We're going to see a lot of that here today, that both teams are going to be giving it their all. 50-50 balls will be fought for all afternoon long as these teams try to advance in the SEC tournament. It's going to be Abrams, the hero of the Mississippi State game, hitting at the buzzer on the tip-in, heading to the end of the bench for some treatment. Ashley Knight, six-foot-five post player, will come in and go head-to-head -head with the six-foot-four Stady. Well, you'll see this all afternoon long, the switch up between the post players, but they want to try to figure out how do you get Jenna Staten tired. So a lot of substitutions, a lot of a lot has been been put on the shoulders of these two young ladies. Stady, excellent blocking shots. Gets the tie up and a possession arrow will give it to Georgia when we come back to Greenville. And when we come back, Charlie Cream, that number cruncher, he'll break down the bracket next. In a world where we expect instant, 
Why do we expect our deodorant to dry in minutes? New Degree Advanced Protection Dry Spray goes on instantly dry for a cleaner feel. 72-hour protection in an instant. In 90 years at Farmers, we thought we'd seen it all. From fires and hurricanes to animal antics we could laugh about later. But we haven't seen this. So Farmers is reducing auto premiums by 25%, extending payment due dates, and expanding coverage for the delivery drivers who are carrying us through. And then we'll do the next thing, and the thing after that, until this is another thing we've seen and done. The Bulldogs shooting 50% from the field. Gabby Conley has six of their 10 points. And Georgia's on top of Alabama by three. A game that's going to go to the wire. Their NCAA hopes hanging in the balance. For more on that, here's Andrea Carter with Charlie. Charlie, thank you so much for being here. As always, we appreciate it. Now, you predicted for this game a lose, a loss would knock a team out of the NCAA tournament, but a win wouldn't necessarily mean that they're in. Why is that the case for both teams? Well, the resumes aren't that strong. They're strong enough to be in the conversation, not strong enough to make any guarantees. Uh, for instance, Georgia's really here because of a great strength of schedule. Alabama's really here because of two very, very good wins against Texas A&M and Mississippi state outside of those things the resumes are pretty thin but a lot of teams resumes are pretty thin this time of year so that's why this game is so important because you've got to keep winning to be able to do the next thing for your resume and that would be facing South Carolina it might not necessarily mean a win against South Carolina especially for Alabama it, but it would mean getting to that game absolutely and then playing well in that game and then seeing what help happens in the rest of the country because that's always in the, one of the considerations here now you said Alabama might not have to beat South Carolina, but Georgia might have to beat South Carolina. Why does Alabama have that edge over the Bulldogs? Well, Alabama has those two wins that we discussed, and the resume is a little bit better. The RPI is better. Strength of schedule is not quite as good, but that RPI is very important. And the way Alabama has been playing at the end of the season is also a key factor in the conversation. So that, that's really why Alabama has the leg up, and they're about three or four teams ahead of Georgia right now on my list. Charlie, thank you so much. Of course. This is Charlie's Christmas Eve every <laughs> single day, isn't it? I mean, look at it. How could you not love being at the SEC tournament with Andrea Carter, too? I was almost ready to call a timeout so Charlie could, you know, go into a little bit more detail. But thankfully, he's here all night long. we got four games coming up here today. This is the first of four. So Charlie, in real time, will keep us updated on the odds for these two teams and the other teams trying to get into the NCAA tournament. That's a three-pointer from Maya Caldwell, 25% three-point shooter, but she's second on the team in three-pointers made and attempted, and Georgia's on top by six. Well, interestingly, you watch the possessions happen. Watch when Jenna Stady touches the ball. Every single time she touches the ball, there's a double team coming. That time, she was able to get the ball out, and they were able to get that ball in. Chloe Chapman, who's done a very good job defensively, gets a hand in there to tie it up. Possession arrow will keep it with Bama. Lewis looking for Walker. Stady out there to defend Jasmine Walker. Walker over Stady for three. Got her with a little bit of a jab step. Surprised that Walker didn't try to show her speed and take it to the basket. Jenna Stady last week was dealing with back spasms, missed some practice time, was not at 100% against Florida. And as you've mentioned, as a foul is called, Alabama's going to try to get physical with her, try to make her work, try to tire her out. and. She has looked pretty good for someone who's been battling back spasms. And Joni Taylor told us yesterday it's been a good couple of days of practice for her getting ready for the SEC tournament. Well, she said the back spasm, they've de dealt with it the last couple of days, gave her a little bit of a rest. And coming into this, she felt really, really good. But I guarantee you with Alabama, one of the things that Coach Curry talked about was tap, being tough, being aggressive, and being and playing physical. And that is something they know is going against Jenna Stady. They're going to have to be physical, aggressive, and tough. Well, the free throw was missed by Isaacs, but there was a lane violation by Alabama, so a second chance here for the freshman from Alpharetta, Georgia. I wonder if the clock 
ticked off a second, and that's why D. Kantner is heading over to the scores table. And that is so frustrating from a coach's standpoint, and even as a teammate. You want to get the game going, but that free throw possession can make or break. I mean, the overtime game, Alabama lost by one. That's one possession that you missed out, one shot. They got lucky that Isaac missed the second one, or the third one, rather. You're too young to remember three to make two in the WNBA games. No. <laughs> well, Don't you didn't have to say no so quickly. You could have given me a little respect. No. Nope. <laughs> Gabby Connolly. Up to Chapman. Can't finish it. Chapman went in hard to the first row, but she is a tough two-sport athlete for the University of Georgia, also a standout on the soccer team, so it doesn't take her much time to get back down the court. Johnson trying to work against Connolly. Good move on the inside, off the window, and one. A lot of dribbles taken there for Sierra Johnson, but she does a good job of getting around that corner. Gabby Connolly, she has a couple of inches on Gabby Connolly, so that up and under right there, good one for her. And Sierra Johnson, I believe, is kind of the X factor for this game. You know, of course, we talk about Jordan Lewis and how well she's done, and Jasmine Walker and Q Morrison, who was a big piece of the defensive part. But Sierra Johnson, offensively and defensively, if you look at her build, she's quick, she's athletic. She can pretty much create any or any opportunity on the offensive end. She can co create any shot she wants to because of her athleticism. And she's playing with a ton of confidence right now. Last three games, 14 points a game, six rebounds, four assists on average, shooting 15 of 29 overall from the field. Making up for lost time, she was a preseason second-team all-conference selection, came off the bench most of the year, wasn't really doing much, but has turned it up during this late-season run for Alabama. Connolly's going to come up short. I don't know if Walker got a piece of that. The officials say no, and it will be Alabama basketball. Well, shot clock was winding down. Connolly sees that out of the corner of her eye and knows she has to get a shot up. They really want to get the ball to the stadium, but the Alabama is doing a great job of just pushing her down low there and making it so hard for her to catch the ball. Now, will Alabama be looking for Johnson again here with Chapman guarding her? Well, it doesn't work right there because you see Jenna Stadia sitting pretty much in the paint, clogging up the, the paint. They do get it to Johnson. She feeds it to Walker. And Walker hits for two. So Johnson, the facilitator that time, and Walker has eight, and Bama has come back to tie it at 14. And I think this is going to be the tail of the game. It's going to go back and forth. There you saw Johnson on the defensive end, but as she tried to turn it up the court, she stepped on the baseline, and it will be Georgia ball. See Christy Curry in her seventh season as Alabama's head coach, 21st season overall, 18 wins this year. They've won four in a row, their longest SEC win streak since 1998. Just to further highlight how good a finish that was for Alabama to set them up here in the tournament. Another turnover, and here's Johnson again. Stephanie Paul back into the game. Johnson gets the contact, and will shoot two. Of course, trying to coach Alabama to the NCAA tournament for the first time since the Crimson Tide went in 1999. And a player on that team back in 1999 was the head coach for Georgia, Joni Taylor who was in two NCAA tournament teams. However, she was unable to play her sophomore year because Joni was playing in the SEC tournament against Tennessee against a team led by Tamika Catchings. And Joni suffered an ACL injury. She said, well, trying to box you out. And I said, well, nobody boxed nope. out to get Catchings. <laughs> <laughs> But and Joni I, and said, I said, it was said a she had to throw me in there. No, no, no. She she made it clear it was a non-contact injury. But you go back to Joni's playing days for the last time an Alabama team was in the NCAA tournament. That's what's at stake here for Bama. When it's all it's interesting too, because you look at it now, she's going against her team, and this would be a great opportunity for her team to be able to make the tournament, especially underneath her. So. A lot at stake right now. Well, Joni's had great success at Georgia. 97 wins now in her fifth year. She did say that her job for four years when she was healthy was guarding you, which was not fun. 
<laughs> but we're great friends now. That's all that matters. That's what basketball does. Basketball allows the friendship. It doesn't matter. The battle on the floor is always going to be there, but it's the friendship off. Well, you're friendly with everybody. I got to imagine there's one person from your playing days who said, you know what, if I don't have contact with that person ever again, I'm okay. Traveling violation. It will be Alabama ball, final minute of the first quarter. I'm not asking you to answer that. I'm just saying that even you. <laughs> I was you... thinking. I was thinking about it. <laughs> Mallory Bates called for that turnover, and you can see the frustration. Mallory Bates, one of the main reasons that Coach Joni puts her in is because of her offense. And so she said the different things that she, her post players bring when you take Stady out of the game, obviously it's a, it's a big difference. Anna Barber into the game for Alabama. Good shooter. She's got it out towards midcourt. Nine to shoot. In the hands of Walker, defended by Paul. Walker tried to feed it inside, but Copeland couldn't handle that pass. Shot clock off. And Georgia will have a final possession. That's really good defense by this Bulldog team and Jasmine Walker instead of pulling up and taking that jump shot to try to that's a difficult uh, difficult pass to Copeland even if she would have caught it. Connolly, a floater, a little too strong. Megan Abrams looks up, gives it a heave from half court, and that will do it. Strong finish to the first quarter for Alabama. They end the quarter on a 9-1 run, and they take a two-point lead to the second. Georgia, the number nine seed. Alabama, the number eight seed, trying to move on to take on number one South Carolina. One in the books here in Greenville. In a world where we expect instant, we expect our deodorant to dry in its new degree advanced protection dry spray. Goes on instantly dry for a clean feel. 72 hour protection in an instant. In 90 years of farmers, we thought we'd seen it all. From fires and hurricanes to animal antics we could laugh about later. But we haven't seen this. So Farmers is reducing auto premiums by 25%, extending payment due dates, and expanding coverage for the delivery drivers who are carrying us through. And then we'll do the next thing, and the thing after that, until this is another thing we've seen and done. Bill, ready for the second quarter between Alabama and Georgia. Alabama head coach Christy Curry wearing a microphone for us this afternoon. This is what she told her team in the locker room before taking the floor. We got to be tougher getting open. We got to be tougher posting up. We got to be tougher off the bounce. We got to be tougher getting every loose ball. We got to be the aggressor. We got to be more physical. All right? Okay, it's our time. The most important thing is to come out of here fired up and ready to go and get off to a great start in the first and second quarter. Don't wait. Don't wait. Tougher, aggressive, and more physical. All right? Great start. Get out there and you be the aggressor from the get-go. You got it? Rise and shine and roll tide. Let's go. <laughs> hey, that's better than a cup of coffee. Rise and shine and go tide. I'd be ready to go. And there was another little touch in there if you tell the nameplates for each of the players that had their hometowns and their high schools on there as well. Nice little touch by the tournament Check here. Check you out. Well, I was always fired observing. up by her. Always observing. Second quarter, ready to go here. Alabama on a run right now. 9-1 roll here for the Crimson Tide as Georgia gets the first possession of the second quarter. And see Barber trying to guard Paul down low. So Georgia trying to get things going here without Stady on the floor right now. Chapman's got four. Barber, very good shooter. Off for Abrams. The defense that Georgia is playing this man-to-man, -man, they're making it hard for Alabama to have any easy shots. See the shot clock winding down. Abrams, tough take, strong finish, and the foul. 
What a great move right there. And Abram really didn't have anywhere to go. Goes in there, but Bates, instead of using her length and going straight up, gets called for that foul. So she'll try to finish off the three-point play. One of the best wins of the year for Alabama. Game at Mississippi State. They were down 13 in the fourth. Abrams had a tip in at the buzzer. Bama went on an 11-0 run to get back into that game with 10 straight points scored by Jasmine Walker. She had 20 in that game all after halftime for Alabama's first win over a top 10 team in six years. Well, it's interesting when you think about Alabama, what they are capable of doing. And those runs, those, th those runs that you've seen, and you've seen it today in that first, in that first quarter, the runs that they have, the way that they play, Coach Curry said, like, this is how we're going to play all the time. She never wants to get down, but if they get down, she believes that her team can win games. Lewis back out to Walker after the three-second violation on one end. A three-second violation is called on the other end. So the last eight games, they had that loss to Georgia in overtime. Bama was down by 22 in that game. But it's that back-to-back -back road win, top 15, Mississippi State and Texas A&M. Well, I believe that's when they really started building off the confidence. When they came back in that Georgia game, even though they lost, they had the confidence in knowing what they were capable of doing. Then they go, they win, they beat Mississippi State, then they go to Texas A&M, they beat Texas A&M. They are at a different level of confidence. You know, Ketch, you're talking about this team's confidence, but Coach Christy Curry has said that they knew that they were going to have an NCAA tournament team. She said, we expected this to happen. They thought it would happen a little sooner, but it's happened as of late. It just took a little bit of time for the team to develop, but they've had confidence from the very beginning as far as the staff goes. Kind of like late bloomers, Drea, <laughs> for this year because they had so many veteran players back. Led by Lewis, who almost got the steal. Now Paul, out of the scramble scores. Well, is that late bloomer at that perfect time? Because when you look at a season, you really want to be peaking at the right time. And as you're going into tournament, you're going into the SEC tournament, you have that run. This is the time to peak. Or be on the way to peak. And I don't know if you want to peak just yet. There's a good block by Mallory Bates. No reset, of course, of the shot clock. It's down to seven. Both teams trying to pick up the defensive intensity. Abrams can't get it, and it's a rebound for Bates. But now a turnover. Johnson takes it back. Here comes Georgia in the three-point game. Chapman got left alone. You can feel how physical this game is. Body flying. You can you can feel I can feel the urgency I can feel just both teams are fighting for much more than just this one game Jenna Stady getting ready to come back into the game Lewis traveled turnover for Alabama Man, if you take a look at just how physical this game has been you go on one end get the turnover you're gonna make and then you keep going back and forth you just see bodies flying but you can feel like just how urgent this is so Stady's back into the game Abrams will check out for Alabama with Brittany Davis back in and they're gonna be interesting to watch Georgia how are they gonna get the ball in Stady's hand Davis fouls Connolly you got your Connolly you know what Connolly can do Maya Caldwell, even with her on the floor, you know what she can do. But Stady's the missing piece right now. She has two points, but she really hasn't touched the ball. First foul on Davis as Connolly steps in. Very good free throw shooter, but this is the first one. SEC now with Alyssa, Andy, and Steffi. They're here all day. They'll have pre and post game coverage of all the second round games. Nobody covers the SEC like we do. It's also available on the ESPN app so you can watch anywhere. They got going this morning at 11.30. We've got our two games here in our day session between Georgia and Alabama. Then it's Auburn and Arkansas. And then the nighttime doubleheader, Florida and LSU and Tennessee and Mizzou. 
Courtney Lyle, Carolyn Peck will be along for that nighttime doubleheader here in Greenville. Walker. Long rebound ends up in the hands of Davis. Lewis on the run. I'll tell you what, after that shot by Jasmine Walker, Alabama just seems like in scramble mode, but Lewis is that calming piece. You know, Don Staley, head coach, you know, coach of the year in the SEC, the number one team in the country, South Carolina, was talking about tournament time, and obviously she has a lot of experience, but she said as Staley tries from outside, the team that calms down first and plays their game the earliest usually has a pretty big edge. And right now, both teams feel like they've got that nervous energy that is just a little tough to control right now. Well, I mean, this is a neutral site for both teams, and this is the first day that they played. So the teams that played yesterday, they got all of that out. They got they got the rust out yesterday, so they'll come into today's game with a little bit more comfort. Jordan Lewis get to the basket. But these two teams, this is the first time they played on this court in this tournament. So you're seeing the rush. You're seeing how how they're playing right now. Second half, I think it'll ease up a little bit. Nothing wrong with that drive by Jordan Lewis. Strong drive and the foul. Physical, aggressive, toughness. The SEC Scholar Athlete of the Year. Redshirt junior out of Florida who already has her undergraduate degree pursuing her MBA right now and running the show for Alabama. Here's Coach Staley. Had her team out here this morning for their first workout in Greenville. And her team will take on the winner of this game at noon tomorrow. South Carolina, of course, has won 23 consecutive games. And you gotta wonder for a South Carolina a team, pass. a young South Carolina team, how they will come into this tournament and respond. And especially after collecting all the awards, one thing Coach Daly said is, those awards are great, but that's not the reward we want. We want to win the, the trophy. I would be shocked if any of those freshmen showed any nerves as the lights get a little brighter. Good defense by Staley. Connolly threw it up. And she'll go to the line to shoot a couple when we come back. Georgia down by three in the first half here in Greenville. In a world where we expect instant, we expect our deodorant to dry in a new degree advanced protection dry spray. Goes on instantly dry for inner field. 72 hour protection in an instant. Greenville halfway through our first game of the day Alabama Georgia there's a look at the rest of the action next up we'll have Arkansas Auburn followed by LSU Florida rounding out the night Tennessee taking on Missouri four teams of course earning that double by not having to play until the quarterfinals on Friday we'll be here with you in just a few minutes for the SEC halftime report to Wanda McDonald will be honored today we will talk about her coach knows a little bit about Miss McDonald something. Well, something. we'll preview Arkansas Auburn and of course talk first half of this game yeah been really impressed coach with Jordan Lewis and Jasmine Walker for Alabama asserting themselves early offensively in this game. Yeah, I'm waiting to see what what Georgia does with the double team down low on Stady. Stady has no field goals. That's huge for Alabama. We'll talk more about this game and of course all the upcoming games coming up in just a few minutes. Eric, Tamika. All right, Alyssa and the crew, thanks very much. What about Jenna Stady's impact beyond the offense? As Andy mentioned, she doesn't have a field goal yet. She's only attempted two shots, but she's had an impact on the defensive end with a couple of blocks. Well, I think just her height alone and having her in the game is an impact, but what she's done, she came out, she wasn't able to catch the ball and really score. Coach put her on the bench for a little bit, brought her back. And I think her impact, she blocked shot, she made a presence, she stepped out on the screen. I mean, you still see her being active, and that's what you want. You don't want a big girl to shut down. On the other end, Jordan Lewis, three for three from the field, seven points so far, helping Alabama to this three-point lead. Scholar Athlete of the Year Award was presented pregame, and it's like, well, now it's, it's time for basketball. And she has been playing at an elite level for Alabama. Yes, she has, no drive, but just putting her head down. She's so smart when she has the ball. And whether it's her scoring or getting the ball in somebody's hand that she knows can score, I think that's what makes her so good. 
In that first meeting between Georgia and Alabama, Lewis had a team high 25 points and four assists. She's got seven. Jasmine Walker's got eight. Davis gets on the stat sheet. Well, that's interesting for Georgia. Georgia's got to do a better job of helping her out. <laughs> Ashley Knight, shot blocker for Alabama. She's first on the team. She's raised her total to 52 on the season just in that one sequence. Stady pulls one away. Gabby Connolly had to dive to prevent it from going out of bounds. Now two on one with Stady back. Well, unforced turnover right there. Stady tried to get the ball out quick to Connolly. Caitlin Hoes on the floor for Georgia. She's got the possession right now, approaching three and a half to go in the first half. Chapman will try a three and make it. Conley, Conley I beg your pardon, is in the double figures now with 10. And I think these are the times that you give Conley a break from running the point guard position, but she gets an opportunity to step out and just shoot. They'll break down for Alabama, so they take a timeout. The save attempt by Connolly, and then deep three from the corner. When you got a player that's hot like Connolly is, there's no opportunity to lack on that. You've got to make sure that you have a hand up in her face. But you know what? Connolly said she's ready to play today. In the first meeting at 15 points, six assists, as I mentioned, into double figures now with 10. Well, I think the most impressive thing is look at the field goal. She was four for 15 in the first meeting. Today, she's four for seven, but it's the quality of shot that she's taking. She's not throwing shots up there, not that she was the first game, but I think she's more conscious today. And then, of course, with Jenna Stady not really being a non-factor thus far down low, she's taking a little bit more of that load. Well, Gabby comes out of the game. Copeland. And I think it's Caitlin Hose for Georgia who gets Russell for the foul. No, it's Isaacs with the foul. Tipped by Caldwell. Almost a turnover. Walker in and out, and there is Copeland to take it away for Alabama. Lewis. Stady's got a rebound. And this is what I mean by just effectiveness with Stady. A lot of post players would stop working when they can't grab the ball, but she's been consistent. Freshman Jordan Isaacs on the inside. Came in averaging two points and two rebounds a game. She's got five points and two rebounds here in the first half. We're tied at 28, but only for the moment. Brittany Davis and one. Well, it's been a struggle for Caitlin Hose the last couple possessions that she's had. She's gotten beat on both plays with no help on that back, that backside. But Davis does a great job of just turning her shoulder. She doesn't face up, and I think that's what caught Caitlin Hose by surprise. Sophomore who's averaged 17 minutes a game off the bench. Can't finish off the three-point play. Hose checks out. And Kayla Hubbard's in the game for Georgia. Called well off to Hubbard. She tried to force it into Isaacs, taken away by Copeland, and here comes Alabama. I think it took so long for Hubbard to even get the ball above her head to pass the ball. By that time, the defense had already shifted. Off the Walker miss, tip back out, and Alabama will reset with 1.45 to go in the first half. Davis shut off by Chapman. Shot clock's at four. Lewis will try a deep three. Didn't miss by much, and Hubbard's got the rebound. The pace of this game right now is just moving so fast. Stady looking for her first field goal, and she's got it. 
Well, that's the first time that you really didn't see Alabama send a double team. Stady takes her time, she's patient, makes that move to the baseline. Four points, five rebounds for the junior. He came in averaging better than 11 points a game and a team best six and a half rebounds a game. Chapman pulls down the rebound. Georgia can go in front here in the final minute. That won't drop, but it'll be a trip to the free throw line. Alabama led by two at the end of one quarter. They closed that quarter on a 9-1 run. Georgia been sharing the basketball. Alabama trying to get into the paint. Both teams that we talked about being a little tight, a lot on the line here, have combined for 16 first-half turnovers. Well, I think both teams have made, have had possessions what they're not really proud of, and they'll look back on the tape. But when you look at the score tied at 30-30, they're pretty much even right now. You come into this tournament, I've said it time and time, you come into a tournament like this, it doesn't matter what your previous record is. You have an opportunity to focus on one game and advance to that next one. This is an NCAA tournament elimination game. The loser will be out of consideration, out of contention, it looks like, according to Charlie Cream, for the NCAAs. The feed inside to Copeland. Travel. Yeah, I just think that's a hard pass for Copeland. She's underneath the basket even when she catches it. Jenna Stady coming back, and you know what her side what she's capable of doing. You've got to kind of, if you're going to give her that pass, give it to her a little bit higher up. That's for any post, not just for Copeland. Twenty to go in the quarter. Shot clock now down to 11. Stady's got good touch from outside, but not this time. Good job by the freshman once again, Jordan Isaacs. And Isaacs just using her height. They're able to tip that ball up and grab it. She's been really aggressive out there. I'm, I'm sure that Joni has been really excited about what she's been able to bring thus far. You see right there, nobody really boxes her out. Abram puts the body on her, but as soon as Isaac moves, she takes the body off. Well, her minutes have been going up over the last three games of the regular season. Well, when you take Q Morrison out and you're looking for somebody else that can come in and defend her length and her athleticism, but really her energy coming off the bench is what has been vital for this team. Well, she has matched her career high here in the first half, seven points, and George is on top by three. Lewis slammed down by Stady, and it will be Georgia basketball. That's what Catch was talking about. Maybe not getting it done offensively, but on the defensive end, a difference maker. Well, look at Jenna Stady. She spaces Jordan Lewis, so she doesn't allow her to get into her body. And then grabs that ball out of the air. Final seconds. Chapman stepped out of bounds with 2.3 to go. So it was right before midcourt. And Alabama's going to have a chance here to get off a shot. And right away, Jasmine Walker jumps off the bench to get into the game. Well, the way Jasmine Walker is shooting, you want her in that game. You want her to shoot if she gets a wide open opportunity. But Jordan Lewis, Sierra Johnson, and they got a nice little lineup out there. In a game where every possession matters, this could be a key one here. Well, Walker's got it. Walker will step into one. Good if it goes, and it is good for free. Jasmine Walker in the game. Unbelievable shot. Going into halftime, I mean, you see the excitement. You can feel it. That is just what Alabama needed to get them going for that second half. So a mistake by Georgia with Connolly stepping out of bounds, just trying to get off a half-court heave. And then it's Walker, and they're going to wave it off. Hang on one second. They went to video replay, and Christy Curry wants an explanation. Well, Christy just got that explanation, and when she cools down for a second, maybe she'll give it to Drea. So here's Andrea. Go ahead, Drea. 
Coach, they just waved off that three-pointer. What is your message going to be to the team at halftime? You know what? It's it's why it's 20 more minutes of basketball. We'll let that go and refocus and come back out the second half and play through the adversity. Um, I feel like our kids played through a lot of it the first half, and we got to continue to do that. Got to play a little better. Yeah, you mentioned playing a little better. What is going to be your focus? What do you have to lock in on for the second half? We got to take care of the basketball. We've got too much standing. We've got to have a little bit more energy and be more distinct with our cutting and getting open and be the aggressor and put our head down and get to the free throw line. Thanks, Coach. Back to you, Eric. <laughs> Christy speaking with a smile. She was looking over her shoulder as the officials went back to the monitor one more time, and they officially waved off that last basket, so no basket. Christy's hot. Taking the jacket's jacket off. coming off. Tight one here in this matchup between an eight and a nine. 33-30 our score at halftime. Well, let's go to the studio. Alyssa, Steffi, and Andy. Thank you, guys. Man, some drama going into <laughs> halftime. Christy Curry shedding the jacket. Coach, you know what it means when the jacket comes off. Down to business, baby. But you can see why these three to me. In 90 years at Farmers, we thought we'd seen it all. From fires to animal antics we could laugh about later but we haven't seen this. So Farmers is reducing auto premiums by 25%, extending payment due dates, and expanding coverage for the delivery drivers who are carrying us through. And then we'll do the next thing, and the thing after that, until this is another thing we've seen and done. Here courtside in a game that we expect to go down to the wire, and past history has shown it will go down to the wire between these two teams every possession matters what's your number one takeaway from this first half as we look forward to the second half well I think it's really just a sense of urgency we talked about this all first half but you can tell that both teams know what's on the line so they have come out and they've been really effective you see the score as it is Jenna Stady was the player who really had Georgia on a roll at the end of the season playing so well and Alabama was ready for her today. How has she tried to fight through the attention she's getting? Well, the first half, I think she really struggled because every time she touched it, they sent the double team. She had a couple of turnovers. Went to the bench, came back out, and has been even more effective. She found herself finding other players on the team. When she's not double teamed, she's able to score down low. But I think the biggest thing, she's got one assist, three blocks on the defensive end, and five rebounds. You see the numbers for Stady over the last seven games of the regular season 20 points and nine rebounds she's gone for 20 or more in the last three games so we'll see what she's able to do here in the second half i have to say the most relieved player on the floor has got to be gabby Connolly, because in that last second scramble she stepped out of bounds and it looked like that turnover was going to lead to a three-pointer instead as the teams were heading to the locker room it was finally waved off so Gabby probably feels a little bit better than she did right at the end of the first half. Well, Alabama I mean, ball to start the third. Go ahead, T. Going into the locker room with a three-point leader, going into the locker room tied, it's a big difference, especially when you look at the way these two teams have played. You said at the last four out of five times that they've competed, they've gone into overtime. It's all about the possession. Maya Caldwell for Chapman, now for Connolly. Gabby Connolly leading Georgian scoring with 10. Chloe Chapman has already matched her career high with six for the Bulldogs. Stephanie Paul comes up short with the shot clock winding down, and it will be Alabama ball. Dre, you had a chance to talk with Joni Taylor. Yeah, I checked in with Joni coming out of halftime, and she said she was really happy with her team's effort in the first half. She thinks effort is going to win it over talent. But two things she really wants them to clean up on the defensive end. They have to make Jasmine Walker score other than three-pointers, and they can't give up any and-one plays. Well, there is right on cue, Drea. Walker trying to score on the inside, could not through a crowd. And back the other way, a foul is called. And Jasmine Walker, I think, will be called for that foul coming down. You can see since the frustration from the other end, from the offensive end, not getting that foul. But she had three players that were around her. Probably a good time to pass the ball out and get the ball moving. And out of frustration, as you mentioned, with the foul on the other end, that's her second personal. Well, good feedback inside, but unable to hit was Chapman. George is not done yet. Well, when you look at the stats, even for Georgia, they had 11, sit, 11 assists on 12, made that 12 assists on 13 made field goal. 
talk about moving the ball, you talk about playing with each other. Georgia on top by five after Stady hits. And Stady is not a player that needs to be anchored down on the low block. She will take it outside, as you just saw there. Has a very nice touch mid-range. Will take it out to the three-point line if needed. And Walker gets tied up. But she's adding another element to her game. Jenna Stady has been being able to step out and knock down that three-point shot, being able to face up, take a couple of dribbles to the basket. Her post moves, I mean, she's really added a lot. And it kind of happened in the second half of this conference, uh, conference play. It's not necessarily like it started at the beginning of the season. Georgia trying to make a late season run to get into NCAA tournament consideration. The feed inside, Lewis ties up Paul, and that will give it to Alabama. Georgia ended the first half on a 10-2 run. Back to what Drea was talking about, about Georgia and the defense that Joni Taylor like. We've seen that here at the start of the third quarter as well. Some pretty good defense from the Lady Bulldogs. Well, they're putting a lot, uh, putting a lot of pressure on the Alabama team. They're forcing them to make bad shots. I mean, they're almost suffocating Alabama. Abrams gets that one to drop. Feed back inside the stadium. Down goes Copeland. Stady follows her miss. Well, I can guarantee you it's much easier to score when you don't have defense in front of you. Copeland <laughs> trying That's my to, kind of defense. <laughs> Copeland trying to hang on a little bit. Walker trying to drive, and there's some more good defense. Chapman takes it away from Jasmine Walker. Feeds it up to Caldwell with the finish. Timeout, Alabama. Well, I tell you what, Alabama trying to figure out what they can do to get back in this game. Georgia has come in with a totally different mentality. They come out on the defensive end, but on the offensive end, this is where it gets down. You see Maya Cowell for two. Like leather, skin is stronger when it's hydrated, but nine out of ten don't get the hydration their skin needs. That's why Dove Men Plus Care Body Wash has a unique hydrating formula to keep men's skin healthier and stronger. Georgia on top by seven. They're without their defensive stopper, Q Morris, an SEC All Defensive Team member. So Tamika, they've got one developing, and Chloe Chapman, how about this play? I love this play right here. She just figured out a way to stay in front of Jasmine Walker, but not just that, able to get the get the steal, get up the floor, and run the break. So that's the person right there that you see, Q Morrison, who has set the level of intensity on defense for Georgia, but you can tell she is out for the season after having labrum surgery. She is still a big part of this team, the biggest cheerleader on the team, but she went through a lot to get that sling on there, and here's Drea with more. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, guys, I talked to Georgia's athletic training staff, and Q Morrison's labral tear was not just a simple labral tear. Their team surgeon said it was the toughest labral tear he had seen in 15 years, and get this, it took almost an hour to pop her shoulder back in place. Q said she was heartbroken. She wanted to play through it if she could have, but she just couldn't, and she's just got to be there for her sisters for the tournament. Thank you, Drea. She's got to be thrilled with what she's seen from Chloe Chapman, the freshman, who's kind of picking up or trying to the slack left by Q Morrison. It, it, of course, the number one question we ask is, how does she sleep with that thing? And Joni Taylor right away says she sleeps in a recliner. That, that's her life right now, sleeping in a recliner and rooting on her sisters here for Georgia. Well, and here is Chapman on the reverse. And you think about injuries, and, and Drea and I both have, have experienced injuries. And Drea, I mean, you could probably talk about this from University of Tennessee, your knee injury really cutting your senior year short and having to sit on the sidelines. And my senior year, I tore my ACL, so I had to sit on the sidelines. You know what that feels like. Well, Q, as you can see right there, she's been the cheerleader. She's been an assistant coach. She's been <laughs> the one who's questioned officials, always doing it with a smile. And that is something we saw in the first game, right when she got out off of her surgery, the last game for that Georgia. She was out there even with one hand, passing the ball, taking shots. We had her, her uh, gym shoes on, and she would, she would have played if Joni would put her in with one arm. 
Off the miss by Walker. Here's Georgia. All the momentum belonging to the Lady Bulldogs right now. And adding to it is Gabby Connolly. Well, Gabby Connolly has started the game with confidence, and she has continued to ride that level of confidence. And you know, I think really being that, that player that had to step up. Walker can't answer with a three. There's Copeland on the glass. Stady with that long reach had it, but then Walker came in to tie it up. They'll give the possession to Georgia. And let's go back to Connolly. I mean, how about Connolly getting to the basket? She just makes it so easy. That one hand to scoop. Connolly now with a team high 12 points. Georgia has outscored Alabama 8-2 to start this third quarter. Remember, they outscored Bama 10-2 to close out the second quarter. Well, that was a close one right there by Chapman. Almost got called. Out to Connolly. Stady. Caldwell comes in to clean it up for Georgia. Well, that's a great play right there by Caldwell, but let's go to Alabama for a second. Ashley Knight able to deter Jenna Stady's shot, but somebody else on that team has got to get that rebound. Amber Richardson in the game, kicks it into the corner. That three won't go, but the long rebound to Davis. Down the Knights. And Stady gets called for the foul. Starting in the second quarter, carrying over here into the third quarter, a 22-4 burst for Georgia, up 11 in the third. In a world where we expect instant, we expect our deodorant to dry it. New degree advanced protection dry break goes on instantly dry for a cleaner feel. 72 hour protection in an instant. In 90 years at Farmers, we thought we'd seen it all. From fires and hurricanes to animal antics we could laugh about later. But we haven't seen this. So Farmers is reducing auto premiums by 25%, extending payment due dates, and expanding coverage for the delivery drivers who are carrying us through. And then we'll do the next thing, and the thing after that, until this is another thing we've seen and done. It's a 20 to 4 burst. We did the math during the break and we confirmed it. 20 to 4 burst back to win. Alabama had a five point lead in the second quarter. No matter how you slice it, Georgia in control right now, but Alabama's trying to control the canine narrative in this game against the Bulldogs. With more, here's Drea. Thanks, Eric. That is one thing that Coach Christy Curry totally supports, her players having pet dogs. She feels like it's a great outlet for them when they get home to have a dog that loves them. No matter what, five players on the team have dogs. Jordan Lewis actually has two dogs, and Coach Christy Curry spun the dog situation for this game. She said, listen, none of you have bulldogs. Your dogs don't even like bulldogs, so let's go out here and get this win. You know, Dre, I wonder if Bulldogs, if, if she's like, we love dogs, but since Mississippi State and Georgia are in the, are in the league, maybe it's like there's a Bulldog fan <laughs> in Tuscaloosa. <laughs> and, and not just in Tuscaloosa, elsewhere around the SEC. Hey, whatever it takes. Got, oh, and there goes the Bulldog. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> See, what, 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 now, did you want to sub submit the picture with you and your dog? Yeah, so my dog, I do have a dog, actually. I got it for Christmas for my boss, and his name is Winter. But he's not alive. Exactly. He's a toy. All he says is all I do is win, 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 no matter what. And then the tail shakes. It's just really cute. That'll be the only dog that I ever have. Thank God my husband it's a and lot. I are on the same page. You know, with, the, with the, uh, the fake toy dog like you have, it's a lot cheaper. You don't have veterinary bills to work about, worry about. I have food. to take him to the vet. That's I don't have to it. do any That's of that. Okay. It's always funny that when people show you my dog or a picture of their dog and they say, well, you'll like my dog. My dog is different than any other dog. And... I just really don't like <laughs> dogs. Tamika Cashin is not here for your dog, no. <laughs> no Ashley offense Knight. to any of the dog lovers. I love, I love people. I love people. We, don't, we did not grow up with any pets in the house except for a chameleon. <laughs> that counts. I'm glad they're throwing the ball <laughs> in the fish. play here so I don't have to talk about your, your chameleon, your pet chameleon. And a fish. Goat fish. Well, now you're adding up the pets. 
not at the same time. Connolly can't hit. Stady got fouled trying to follow it up. Well, that's where Jenna Stady, that's her effect. That has been her effect all afternoon long. She started it off with the rebounds and getting to the free throw line. Even when she was getting doubled, pulled out a little bit, sat out a little bit back in, and, you know, she has been effective on the boards. Outstanding free throw shooter at 88% on the season. And I think one thing you'll look at for Stady as this game continues to go on is what we have not seen is a rim run. And that is something that she has been able to do the last couple of games. You can tell her body from this year compared to last year, she's in better shape. She's been able to get up and down the floor. And she's been able to get a lot of basket in transition. Well, she's drawn a lot of attention from Alabama today, yet she still has a double-double, and she gives another rebound. It's her sixth double-double this season. Connolly, tough finish here as Isaacs can't get it to go. Almost went down. Lewis. Davis. Yes, Alabama needed that three, and they get it for Brittany Davis. Well, that's the thing about Georgia, and that's the thing about Alabama. Georgia knows how well Alabama is and that they will not go away. They will not stop fighting. This is what happened at Georgia a few weeks back. So you can't take your foot off the gas. You've got to continue to drive. You've got to continue to do all the small things to try to put Alabama away. Rebound for Richardson. There's a drive to the basket by Jordan Lewis, her first points of the second half. I love the way Jordan Lewis plays. And it's almost like effortless when you watch her. The combination of her, and I'd like to see the matchup of her against Gabby Connolly because I think just the way both of them play. Well, right now it looks like it's Davis defending Connolly, perhaps triangle and two being employed as reaching in and knocking it away. Another good defensive play for Georgia, but they can't keep possession. And Lewis got an open look and it was halfway down. Foul called on Alabama. Looks like nope. They're going to say. The other way, and a foul called on Georgia. And a foul was called on Gabby Connolly hooking Davis. And at first it was called the opposite way. Uh, I think it was just a mistake by our official pointing one way, and the foul is on Connolly, who's looking up at the video board in the arena to see if that should have been the call. Second personal foul on Connolly. Well, this is what you talk about effort. Both teams giving all out 100% effort. Walker, good feed on the inside, but another miss for Georgia. You know, I know we talked a lot about you know, Alabama, the, I'm sorry. the NCAA bid and being able to keep your hopes alive. But I think it's even for the tournament, being able to continue to play every single game out. Foul called on Alabama. Alabama shooting this quarter three of 13 from the field. So Christy Curry's team has struggled to get anything going here in a game they have to have to help themselves in the NCAA tournament picture. Well, they've passed the ball down low to Ashley Knight a few times and Cope win as well and, and just haven't been able to convert down low, but that's another effect of Jenna Stady and her size and her hand straight up, what type of effect she's able to have on the game. Mopping things up as Stephanie Paul gets set to go to the free throw line. One of two seniors on this Georgia team along with Ari Henderson. Stephanie, because of injuries, and you can tell she's got that left knee that is braced up. Hasn't been able to practice much, but yesterday at the 45-minute practice for Georgia, you can tell it's a senior with not much time left. She looked like a freshman. She was <laughs> spry. She was bouncing around this arena. She was thrilled to be practicing here and hoping it's not her final practice of this SEC tournament. Well, I mean, it's 45 minutes, and, you know, even when you watch their practice, it was a fun practice. It was more of a shoot-around. Of course, most teams have another alternate site where they're actually practicing, but... You've got to come out and have your experience on the SEC floor. I mean, the pictures and just enjoying the whole thing. Beautiful from Connolly. A little jab step to get the distance she needed in front of Walker. Knocks down the two. I don't think Connolly wants to go home. I mean, you look at the way she's playing. That fire, that focus. She's locked in. 
Lewis tries to answer. That was batted out of bounds by Chapman with 156 to go here in the third quarter. Sierra Johnson will come into the game. It's been a quiet game for Johnson here today. Just four points. She has played 21 minutes. Does have five rebounds and three assists. And Sierra Johnson is that player you never count out. Stady will go to the bench. She might be quieter. She might have had a quiet game thus far, but with two minutes to go in the third quarter and another 10 minutes in the fourth, I believe at any time she can turn it on. Copeland rolls to the basket. The feed from Johnson. So if Alabama gets the performance from Sierra Johnson that she has provided the last three games, here in the second half, this one will go down to the wire. Alabama could use it right now. They're down by eight. I think this game is going to go down to the wire regardless. Foul called on Stephanie Paul. Well, I think it's hard. Stephanie Paul gets put into a hard situation there. She tries to drive, but that point guard has to move over on the opposite side to allow her more space to be able to move. Javin Nicholson is into the game for Stady for Georgia. Freshman post player didn't play last time out against Florida. Lewis has it knocked away. Another good defensive play. But Lewis sticks with it and picks up the foul. Count the hoop. And did you see her face when she hit that down? Not... Jordan Lewis has always played with so much composure. She doesn't really get rattled. And she doesn't really show a lot of emotion. And sometimes I have to joke, like, you can smile when you're out there, but look at that. Reaction when she gets that shot up with the and one. Chapman picked up her second personal foul. Well, Lewis is a tough player. She had a cut on her shooting hand that required 12 stitches back in January, and she played through it. She wasn't at 100%. Alabama lost to Arkansas and Kentucky during that period of time. Lewis is the player that last year Broke her wrist against Virginia, didn't know it, ended up playing 34 minutes in that game, and then 34 minutes in the next game. And Chloe Chapman knocked that down with a hand in her face from Sierra Johnson. New career high for the freshman out of Maryland. Eight points for Chapman. Lewis tries to get by the freshman. Davis on the run. I think fourth quarter is going to be a fun one to be a part of. Look at the way these two teams are playing. You can tell a lot is on the line. Shot clock is turned off. 15 seconds to go in the quarter. Caldwell. Caldwell will try a tough one and make it. Maya Caldwell for two. Chapman in the backcourt, tried to get the steal, almost got it, but it will be Alabama ball with 1.4 to go. Chapman did enough in the backcourt to bring the clock down to 1.4. Officials going to talk it over. Well, it's almost a turnover, Sierra Jackson trying to just throw the ball to Jordan Lewis without really looking. Walker will try it again off the backboard, and that is it for the third quarter. A seven-point lead for Georgia heading to the final quarter. Who will move on to the quarterfinals to take on the number one team in the country, South Carolina? We've got ten minutes, or maybe more, and we'll find out. In 90 years at Farmers, we thought we'd seen it all. From fires to animal antics we could laugh about later. But we haven't seen this. So Farmers is reducing auto premiums by 25%, extending payment due dates, and expanding coverage for the delivery drivers who are carrying us through. And then we'll do the next thing, and the thing after that, until this is another thing we've seen and done.
23 wins in a row, including 16 in a row in SEC play. The number one team in the country, the number one seed, of course, here in the SEC tournament. The South Carolina Gamecocks are in Greenville. They will play at noon tomorrow against the winner of this game between Alabama and Georgia. That's ready to head to the fourth quarter. But before we start the fourth quarter, here's Drea. Thanks, Eric. I'm here with WNBA head coach Nikki Collin. Coach, it's always so good to see you. What brings you to the SEC tournament? Little scouting. You know, this is my region of the country, so easy car trip for me to get over here. And the winner of this game faces South Carolina tomorrow. What have you seen from that team in their season? Wow, South Carolina has been dominant all season. It's amazing with so many freshmen that balance between their senior leaders and their freshmen how good they've been. And you know, you said senior leaders. They've got two, Kiki Herbert Harrigan and Ty Harris. What makes those two pro ready? Well, I think when you talk about Harris, you talk about the consummate point guard. Gets the ball to her teammates, guards the heck out of people, has size and skill, and is really shooting the three better. Harrigan just has that pro body. She's a great athlete. She gets on the boards and she shoots it better than most people think. Coach, thank you and happy scouting. Thank you. Back to you, Eric. <laughs> Thanks, Trey. Appreciate it. Gabby Connolly, as Tamika has mentioned, has that look like she is locked in and she got the stop on one end. As you take a look at Kiki Herbert Harrigan, we were talking today with Gary Blair, the Texas A&M head coach. His team was here practicing this morning and he was giving a lot of praise to her as, along with India Jones, his talented player averages a double-double. Two of the most improved players, if not the most improved players in the SEC. And Kiki's got that look like she has just scratched the surface, all business, but scratched the surface of what she can bring. Davis with the feed to Walker. I would agree with you. Kiki Harrigan, we talked about it, Herbert Harrigan. We talked to even Coach Daly about what had been the difference in her game. It seems like she started off the season on one area, but halfway through that, it's like she elevated her game to another level, and she kind of gave credit. She said, I think having Aaliyah Boston on the team has also helped Herbert Harrigan as far as just the way that she plays, the way that she goes into the game, her mindset. You know, she just brought a different element, and you can see, I mean, she is jumping out of the gym, watching her in practice earlier today. Right, Go ahead, Stady. Jenna Stadia. Right, <laughs> One thing we have not mentioned, Jenna Stadia has a double-double. I mentioned that. Oh, okay, well. I know you well, we mentioned it. I, 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 I do you listen don't. to you. I do. <laughs> now, yeah, that's yeah. the first time we saw her drive to her left like that and uh, go with the sweet finish. And that's going to be a walk. Yeah, it's interesting. you got to get the ball. I think for Alabama, they've got to get the ball. Jordan Lewis had got to come and get the ball. They tried to put, they tried to put Sierra Johnson back in the game, but Sierra Johnson... It's not playing the way that she normally does. She normally puts her head down and she will attack the basket and she will create opportunity. She had five or six. She came in the game and acted like she didn't really know what to do with the ball. Connolly, Chapman, the entry to Stady off the window for two. Yeah, Georgia George. starting to get some separation. They have matched their largest lead with 11. Alabama brings it up. They have turned it over three times already here in this fourth quarter. Yeah, Jenna Stady feeling good. She got that drive, and then when they're not bringing the double team, she is really good at being able to score. Batted around, last touch by Georgia, the Alabama ball. I think Alabama right now, they got to figure out how do you get the ball in Jordan Lewis's hands. Jasmine Walker, they need to get her an open look where she doesn't have to dribble. She can just shoot. And then Copeland. Stady takes it away. Another turnover for Alabama. That's four already. And Chapman has come into this game. We knew that she was out here for her defensive prowess and coming after her mentor, Q Morrison, but she has shown that I am not just a defender. I can come in and I can get just as much done on the offensive end. Well, look what she's done today. Eight points, six assists. She's attempted 10 shots. She's at the free throw line right now. See the turnover numbers for Georgia, but more importantly, Alabama with four of their 16 turnovers to start here in the fourth quarter. Chloe Chapman, a two sport standout for Georgia. Had a team high six goals for the Georgia soccer team this year. All freshman team selection in the SEC. Now starting in the SEC tournament for the basketball team. And setting the tone here on the defensive end 
for the Lady Dogs. Well, she definitely had the assignment in having a guard, Jordan Lewis. She also had two steals to go along with. There she is reaching in to get another steal. Three steals. Well, what she takes away, she gives back. Good catch. Traveling violation. I mean, why would you put Ashley Knight in that situation to have to grab the ball and try to score? That's not her strong suit. Got to wait for her to get set and give her the ball. And you see a lot of frustration right now from this Alabama team, but they've been in this position before. They've been in the same position with this Georgia team. And one thing they do have confidence in, Christy Curry will not let them give up. Caldwell. Stady, turnaround three-pointer, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Lewis trying to catch Georgia in the scramble, but Chapman got back to get in her way. Oh, Chloe Chapman has been a difference in this game here today. She is playing at a Q Morrison level when it comes to defense. Well, I'm sure Q Morrison has worked in her ear coming into this tournament as she's such a great leader. Even though she's out with her shoulder injury. Uh-oh, Jenna Stady's grabbing her right knee. Get her up on her feet. and see if she can put weight on that right leg. Again, dealing with back spasms, but... That's not the issue here right now for Jenna Stady. And Jasmine Walker trying to play her straight up, but looks like Jenna just fell right on her knee, and she yep. had knee pads on. Well, you can see the left leg of Walker coming in and hitting Stady twice, actually. Stady will go to the bench. And Jenna Stady has become the focal point for a lot of these defenses and trying to figure out how do you stop her and we'll go out, get checked out for a second. That's Brittany Davis. I tell you what though, she can't afford to stay out for too long, so uh, looking over there and you can only affect Joni Taylor will try to figure out how do we get her in the game. Inside of six minutes to play here in the fourth. After six turnovers to start the fourth quarter. Alabama scored with Davis, and then the freshman, Javin Nicholson, in for Stady, answers on offense. Javin Nicholson has had plenty of games where she hasn't even been in the game, but one thing is when she gets in the game, she is effective. And a foul called on Stephanie Paul. Now, why is that that she could not play against Florida last time out then play today? Joni Taylor went into detail a little bit with you about she really relies on matchups, and she does that to keep everybody ready to play throughout the course of the season. Well, I think you look at matchup, but I also think, you know, the way that she communicates with her players is so important because when you know why you're not getting in the game and you know the matchup that you're being faced, then you can go in with a different mindset. But one thing for Javon Nixon and all of her players is that when they get called, they come in and you can tell today like they have been effective. Chapman, the minute that she plays that she's been in there, Nicholson comes right in off the bench, scores. Davis, the entry pass, and a foul called as they fed it inside to Copeland. Uh, I mentioned Jenna Stady getting her back into the game quickly, and here she comes as Nicholson heads to the sideline. It's like Jenna's knee pads are falling apart there. <laughs> we <laughs> got a piece over here. <laughs> yeah, that, is that from her knee pad? Yeah. <laughs> Look at those numbers for Stady, how she has turned it up. We've talked a lot about <laughs> Alabama. Maybe they're her lucky knee pads. Alabama playing so well down the stretch with the four straight wins, but Georgia getting great production from Jenna Stady. Uh, Jaden, Jenna Stady, 14 points and 12 rebounds. She's been pretty effective. 
Approaching five minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. The winner will play South Carolina tomorrow in the quarterfinal round here in Greenville. And a wild pass by Stephanie Paul will head out of bounds. And that will get us to our media timeout with five minutes straight up to go here in the fourth. Well, we can't say enough about Jenna Stady and her impact, but the double-double 14-point, -double 12 rebound been so impressive today and the thing to look for the last five minutes of the game another drive like leather skin is stronger when it's hydrated but nine out of them don't get the hydration their skin needs that's why Dove and plus care body wash has a unique hydrating formula to keep men's skin healthier and stronger Guys, we have to sprint back like our life it depends on it and turn around and get set so that we can guard the ball by here. Listen, box out here. We're starting to give up offensive rebounds. Box out down here. Okay, they're struggling to score in the half court. Box out, one and done. Everybody put a butt on somebody and box out. Georgia head coach Joni Taylor mic'd up. Team huddled up right now. The defense has been the difference. They went on a 20 to four burst from the second quarter into the third quarter as we take a look at winning with style brought to you by Belk and this defensive style for Georgia. Well, Georgia has done a great job. You see, they just continue to pile it up down low. They are forcing Alabama to play outside of what they've normally done. I mean, they are everywhere. They're getting still everywhere. They're getting all the hustle plays. They're making it hard for Alabama to even find an open shot. Even on the, the rebound, I mean, we heard Johnny Taylor talk about it. One and done, and you have seen if they're not getting in a steal, they're making it hard for the Alabama team to score, and they're getting those rebounds. You can see Alabama's shooting struggles, one for 13 for almost a 10-minute stretch. They have three three-pointers. Jasmine Walker's made two. Nine steals for Georgia, three for Stephanie Paul, two each for Stady, Chapman, and Connolly. And one other... Note on the defense, Jenna Stady has a career-high seven block shots. Well, she's been phenomenal, but I have one other thing to talk about is points off a of turnover. Georgia has 11 points off of the turnover compared to our, uh, Alabama's Arkansas. <laughs> like, on oh, my eighth, Alabama. <laughs> That's going to be a blocking foul called on uh, Caldwell. Drea, you were listening in on the Alabama huddle last time out. Yeah, Eric, Coach Curry was in good spirit. She said, guys, we've done this before. We were in this same position against Mississippi State. You can do this. The one thing she kept emphasizing was be aggressive. She said, get your chin up, push in transition. We got to get one stop at a time. Well, I think that's an important note, Dre. It is one possession at a time. And you go back, you had the opportunity to call this game the last time they played when it went into overtime. Around five minutes is when the game really shifted in Alabama. Just, they're still in the game. It's 52-59, they're only down by seven. Every single possession, but we realize how Alabama played. They feed off of energy like this. Georgia bench is a little hot after that last call. They counted the basket. Copeland couldn't finish off the three-point play. She's in the double figures now with 10. So it's a seven-point game, and to Drea's point, yes, Alabama has been in this position before when they were down to Mississippi State by 13 in the fourth and came back to win. Stady takes it inside for two. If somebody doesn't figure out how to stop Stady from this Alabama team, I don't know if, if they can get beyond that. I mean, they started the game double-teaming her. They've gone away from the double-team. And every time she has caught the ball in scoring position on a one-on-one, -on -one, she's made it. Walker on the turnaround can't get it, and Johnson gets called for the foul. Sierra Johnson really struggling tonight, and one for four. I didn't know the last time she'd only taken four shots. Looks like Gabby's okay. That was a pretty hard fall. Alabama will bring a little pressure towards the backcourt here, it looks like. Connolly off to Caldwell. And Georgia will set it up inside of four minutes to play here in the fourth. Alabama trying to spark some off, some defensive possession to get the offense. Ball oh, couldn't get it to go. Alabama gets a stop, and here come the tie. 
And they get Johnson or Walker going. Copeland with a second chance here. Davis, good three-point shooter. Off the window. Kind of that, that shot right there. Brittany Davis gives her 14 points. Alabama searching for somebody that can score some points and keep them in this game. Connolly for Stady. Won't drop, but a second chance here again for Georgia. And Georgia trying to use the shot clock to their advantage. Maya Caldwell got the rebound. Inside of three to play, shot clock's at four. Shot clock's at two, Stady throws it up and it will come up short, so Alabama will take over. Well, that's another tough position to put Jenna Stady in, even though she's at the top. And that's a scoring position. Copeland's right there in her face. You gotta get a guard, you gotta penetrate it to get to the paint. Jasmine Walker has not scored in the second half for Alabama. She's got eight points. She's been a big part of their surge here down the stretch. They look inside and can't get it, and Copeland knocks it out of bounds. Well, Copeland gets a nice look right there, not over, able to score over Stadium. You know, I know we keep talking about her effect, but Stadium is long, and she has figured out Previous years, that would have been a foul because she would have brought her hands down, but she has learned how to play and stay out of foul trouble, keeping her hands straight up. She has just one foul here today, catch 16 points and 13 rebounds. Scramble for the basketball. Chapman got a timeout before she got tied up. Well, I'm impressed with the poise that Chloe Chapman has played with today and the energy and how she has set that tone. She's got a career high in scoring, but also with those six assists, and just being so disruptive for the Georgia Lady Bulldogs. First of four here today, Arkansas and Auburn are coming up next. You know, if you thought you had trouble keeping your A team <laughs> straight now, wait till we get going later. Tennessee will make their tournament debut against Mizzou. A lot on the line for Tennessee. You heard Charlie Cream earlier talk about Alabama and Georgia, the winner of this game still keeping their NCAA tournament hopes alive. Tennessee wants to stay off that bubble. They're, they're off the bubble right now, but a loss here in the opener against Missouri would firmly put them on the bubble and in jeopardy of missing the NCAA tournament. LSU and Florida will play before that 8 o'clock game between the Lady Vols and Mizzou. I think there's a lot on the line for majority of the teams. Obviously, you know, South Carolina being number one. They're set. Texas a and Mississippi State. But there's quite a few teams that Thing, how things shake up here in the SEC tournament, and then of course the other tournaments that are going on. Oh, beautiful drive and finish by Gabby Connolly. And Gabby Connolly continues to shine. She stepped up at the right moment when it was her time in the first half, in the third quarter. She was the one that was scoring, but Jenna Stady took over. Walker finally gets her first points of the second half. 11 now for Walker. She can shoot them back into this one quickly. Well, they, they really thrive off of her shooting those threes, and if Alabama can get her to knock down a few of them, then everybody plays with more confidence. Back for Connolly. Connolly will try again. Not this time. Stady will go to the line. That was an interesting defensive possession, but Gabby Connolly's so good at setting up that screen and even though she didn't use the screen she forced the defender to jump to that side to give her an easy look to the layup and jenna stady copeland tried to stop connelly and jenna stady there for the boards and she stays perfect at the free throw line and it's interesting you look at the score 58 64 and Georgia up by six, but I feel like this game has just been such highs and lows and a game of runs. Stady with 18 points, matching what she did against Alabama in the regular season meeting that went to overtime. Lewis, wide open look for three, and Alabama's not done yet. Well, this is what happened the last time these two teams met, and 
with a minute and a little bit over a minute left. A four-point differential, anything can happen. Georgia has been playing loose for most of this game. Will they get tight now with the lead down to four? Well, I think it's important that you don't play to not lose. You play the game to win. Stady can't hit. Copeland's got the rebound, and here come the Crimson Tide with under a minute to go. Lewis was fouled on the drive. That will be the fourth team foul on Georgia. And how about Jordan Lewis, just how effective she's been. She comes to that wide open three, uses the screen that was set by Walker. You can't help off a of Walker. Jordan Lewis able to come over and knock down that shot. Foul on Caldwell, her third, a timeout called by Alabama. A reminder, according to Charlie Cream, what's at stake? Georgia still in the hunt for an NCAA tournament bid. They need a win here. They would probably need to knock off South Carolina, keep their hopes going. Alabama, a little ahead of Georgia in Charlie's bracketology, but a loss here would send them back down the list behind those who are last four in, next four out. Georgia 65, Alabama 61. And again, we thought would go down to the wire and down to the final possession. How about the end of the first half? Jasmine Walker looked like she had a three-pointer at the half to tie the game at 33, but the officials went to video and said that it came after the half ended. So they overturned the call on the court. And look where we are right now. That one is no good, but if it's good, it's a one-point game. They look to Walker right away. Can't hit, and who else but Chapman has a rebound. And give a foul to Stady, who hasn't missed at the free throw line today. Then it's so hard when you look at that play because it was such like on the cusp of which way it could go. That is definitely something that Coach Curry is going to look at and, and probably talk about. But after review, it it's was clear. clear. It, was, yeah, it, was clear. The, it was the right call after going to video review, but this is a team for Christy Curry that has been on the wrong side of some close calls throughout the year. You think back to that Tennessee game. They had that game that Renaya Davis out of nowhere makes this miracle three from deep to hand Alabama a loss. Alabama has fought back here at the end of the season to get to 8-8 eight and eight in conference play. 18 wins overall. Stady continues to get it done. She's gone for 20 for the fourth straight game. And how steady has she been that first quarter? Not really effective as far as scoring-wise, but doing a little bit all of the other stuff. And then she comes in that second quarter, gets rolling. Third quarter, she's on a roll, and you see where she is on that fourth in the, during the fourth quarter. Turnover. Alabama gives it up to Caldwell, and Caldwell is fouled with 19.7 to go, and Georgia on top by six. That's how this quarter started, with Alabama having trouble taking care of the basketball. Six turnovers to start the quarter and a costly one here. Well, and this is really, is, it's not, it got tipped, Connolly, of course, get that tip, but Alabama trying to figure out how to take care of the ball and they're running out of time. Maya Caldwell into double figures now with 10 to go along with five rebounds and four assists. And you take a look at the Alabama bench and you can see a lot of frustration. Off the miss, timeout called. Seven point game. And let's take a look at what Jenna Stady has done. Well, Jenna Stady, 20 points, 14 rebounds. Seven, seven blocks. Seven block. I mean, I think that's the most impressive thing. Seven blocks. But, you know, I just talked about this, the transition of her game from the first quarter to the fourth quarter. And one thing about Georgia and one thing that Joni Coleman said is Jenna Stady had gotten to the point where she has allowed herself to stay in games and not get kind of bogged down when she doesn't get the ball early. And you saw that in the first quarter, they kept throwing double teams at her. And then she was able to figure out that second, third, fourth quarter how to keep it going. So I don't know if we could put her on the triple-double watch with 19.2 to go. It would be just the second triple-double in SEC tournament history. 
You want to guess who had the only triple double in SEC tournament history? That's unbelievable. Uh, I'll, I'll let you phone a friend if you want to call Coach Landers <laughs> for this one. I know who it is. I know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa Edwards did it back in 1986. Went for 24, 10, and 10. The 10 assists. Stady tracking down a blocks triple double. And the same matchup. Yes. Same Georgia, matchup. Alabama. So unless Stady gets to work really fast. You never know. Does Alabama have one more little bit of magic left? Walker gets a pretty good look, but comes up short. Shot clock is off. Alabama will bring pressure into the backcourt. And that was a really good look for Walker. I mean, she's hit that shot time and time again. Definitely frustrating when it doesn't go in, especially off an air ball. Stady to Hubbard to Caldwell. And Alabama will not foul. The Georgia Lady Bulldogs win it here. And they'll take on South Carolina in the quarterfinal round after a 68-61 win over the Crimson Tide. Well, the tale of this game has really started off with Gabby Connolly. Cannot say enough about this young lady. 16 points, but she was the one that got it going. Then, of course, you move on to Jenna Stady, and we just went over Jenna Stady, but 20 points on her way. She could have had a triple-double, ended up with the double-double, but she was phenomenal at the game that went on. So the number nine seed beats the number eight seed here to get things started here on a busy Thursday. South Carolina will take on Georgia in the quarterfinal round at noon tomorrow. Still to come today, Arkansas and Auburn standing by. Auburn advancing after their win over Vanderbilt, 77-67. Later on, it's LSU and Florida. And Tennessee will take on Missouri. But right now, let's talk about this Georgia win. Here's Drea with Gabby Connolly. Gabby, congrats on the win. In your first matchup, you were 4 for 15. You were 7 for 14 today. What made the difference? I think just staying aggressive and coming out with the aggressive mindset is what it's really all about. I mean, shooters shoot, so like that's what you have to do. Keep staying aggressive. My teammates have great belief in me, and so does the coaching staff, and I just wanted to do the best I can for my team. And you all had a freshman, Chloe Chapman, starting her first game in the SEC tournament. What effect did she have on the game? I'm just really happy for her, first of all, because um, I know she struggled a little bit. Um, but I understand how hard it is as a point guard, especially being a freshman coming in. They pressure the basketball really well. She's doing an amazing job for us. Um, I just can't wait to do see what she does moving forward. And Jenna Stady had a slow start in the first half, but still finished with 27 blocks. How would you characterize her play? Jenna is Jenna. I mean, she's a big post presence for us. She does everything for us. Um, I mean, she does a lot of the dirty work um, that may, maybe people don't see or don't credit her for. But we know what Jenna does for us. Elman, we're really grateful for everything she brings to the floor. And you all are playing in this tournament without Q Morrison, who had a big role on the team. What do you have to do to step up for her? I think just Q is that that energizer for us. She, she's like an energizer bunny, really. She brings everything, defense, offense, whatever you can think of. And so I know people want to step up for her because um, she's dealt, dealt with a lot of injuries and whatnot, but she's always there training us on and everything. So I think really where we can step up for is on our defense. Oh, er, Gabby, congratulations. Thank you. Eric, back to you. Drea, thanks so much. Congratulations to Gabby and her Georgia teammates after a win here today over Alabama, 68 61 is the final. We send it over to the set. Alyssa, Steffi, and Andy, it's all yours. Thank you, guys. What a great win by the Georgia Bulldogs. Love Gabby Connolly. Opening and opening up the post-game interview with a shooter shoot. Got to love it. Steffi loves that. We got a round of applause from Steffi Sorensen. Georgia punches their ticket to tomorrow's quarterfinal round. They'll have a big game against the number one seed in the SEC tournament, the South Carolina Gamecocks. This is a matchup that always came down to the wire when you talk about Alabama and Georgia. A bunch of overtime games between these two programs. Georgia Georgia edged them out in the regular season. Steffi, they do it again tonight. Yeah, Georgia, I mean, today was just fantastic. Jenna Stady almost getting a triple-double. Just really impressed with her second-half play. Coach Landers, I'm sure you could agree with that, too. This was a game with NCAA tournament implications on the line. A bubble matchup. Charlie Cream is standing by with now what this means as the Georgia Bulldogs get a win. Hey, Charlie. Hey, Alyssa, thanks. 
Now, Alabama's NCAA tournament hopes are now over. They needed to get that win. It did not happen. Georgia stays alive. Georgia's now my first team in the next four out, which means it's still a big mountain to climb, and that mountain is represented by South Carolina tomorrow. Georgia still going to probably need to beat South Carolina to get into the field, but if they do, they will be. Big mountain to climb, but at least they're at the foot of that mountain and have a chance. Charlie, big mountain indeed, and I know head coach Joni Taylor will have the ladies ready for it. Now here's a look at your NCAA tournament bubble teams as we stand. Georgia in that next four out category. Obviously still some work to do.